We are Max, Lee, and of course, Oki. Last week, we took you the world's largest salt flats. The Salar de Uyuni in Bolivia completely blew us away and gifted us with the best sunset we have ever seen. We also made new friends to convoy with. One of them was even willing to share a bed with Oki. But the salt flats were really just a taster of what was to come, as this week we tackle one of the most remote and challenging drives of our entire journey from Canada to the base of South America, the world famous Lagunas route. salt flats we went and got the car washed off got all the salt washed off and we went and found public showers I don't know if you can tell but I'm still quite burnt from the second day on the flats and we've got a new little buddy Clover decided to sit with us on this drive for about an hour or so hopefully she's nice she's keeping my keeping my uh, legs warm Aki doesn't seem to mind <laughs> it's pretty chill about it and Max, are you excited to tackle this Laguna's route? Yeah, I am like fully pumped for it. I'm a bit worried, like the roads are already pretty washboard, so I'm just hoping it's not too hard on the vehicle. We've also seen a little bit of snow as we go. We are starting this journey at about 36, 3700 meters. That's what the salt flats are at. And our highest pass is gonna be 5,000. Uh, so it's gonna, it's gonna be chilly, but we got some wine, we got some food. And there's we some got hot, some dogs. And there's some hot springs along the way. So that is where we're all very, very excited for. Well, we are officially on off-roading Laguna's route territory. We decided collectively to take the western route. Um, it's funny, I was just teasing Max. He has no idea what we're driving. He hasn't even looked at the map, but he's a driver. Driver. <sighs> Navigator, sleeper. We've all got our roles. <laughs> and I don't oh, like to make mess with that. Gosh, it's soft sand already. As right. you can see by the roads, it is advised to do this on a 4x4. However, being sprinters with high clearance, that does help us a lot. And we have driven on a lot of tactical roads already, so we are both feeling confident in our convoy of the vans. It's just going to depend when it gets really high if we get slippery and icy. I was going to say, why don't you actually tell them what the Laguna's route is? Why don't you tell them what Laguna's route is? Well, the Laguna's route is a route that has lagoons, different coloured ones, and uh, both Kathy, who's in the front vehicle and I, actually did this six years ago with a Jeep tour, and it's some of the like the most beautiful, crazy landscape you'll go to. But it's also a section that connects Bolivia through to Chile, going over a pass into the Atacama Desert in Chile. So not only is it an amazing drive, but it's actually continuing our path. And yeah, next next country, Chile. Now we're gonna come straight on driving. Yeah. Always bounce. Like I just went over that bump and popped for my fridge door and smashed. Like, all right, let's see how many uh, screws we lose on this drive. Yeah, and your, your back on. wheels got air that time. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah. yeah, it'll be a good test for us for sure, but that's why our list of things to fix is coming in Chile after this drive. Yeah. So, to go a bit further into depth from what Max Wow! Oops. Oh man. Yeah, just to give a bit more detail, this route is over 400 kilometers. We just finished gassing up in a little town called San Cristobal, which is gonna be, oh boy, 
and of course being difficult roads, increasing in elevation, our gas mileage won't be as good as normal. So we did buy an extra um, jerry can, which Jordan has very nicely put on the roof of his van with his two jerry cans because that's the biggest thing that everybody warns is don't run out of gas on this route because there is really none to replenish you. All right, so we have just visited our very first Laguna. Lee, your first ever wild flamingos, what'd you think? They're beautiful. Yeah. It smelled like you can smell the sulfur of a lake. Yeah, no, they're really pretty, very peaceful. Ah. First ever wild Australian people. Here, you're gonna have to take it, yeah. stop. Look, I know the camera's crooked, but I don't think I've ever seen them. They're tiny. Wow. I did not even think that that was something we'd see here. So, we've made our first camp and we've tried to form a bit of a wind tunnel with the vans, but I wanted to give you a quick look at the debris just from our first drive. You know, we have these, these straps and everything holding things in place, but just when it bumps enough, things open up and <laughs> we've got, got some, uh, our first casualties. Okay, I'm gonna trade these three no. for a... Are you playing it? You don't need to take it then. And then I'm gonna play this. What is take this? any two resources from the bank, and I'm gonna take two hay, please. No. And that will give me a city. No, I didn't even get to use my knight. No. I had a nice no. no. You wouldn't have a knight. And that is 10. <laughs> well oh. done, well done. Well done. You did your best to make me lose. <laughs> Good game, guys. Thank Good you. Game. Good game. Good it's game. Fun with it's a lot easier camera. once you know how to play. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Sorry, we didn't film all that much last night because we got stuck in an epic battle of Catan. <coughs> and this morning we have woken up early because we want to see a phenomenon that we have heard that happens here. But first I want to show you just how cold it was last night. This is ice coming from our tap, so that's not going to work for a bit. And we put some dishwater in here. So yeah, I think it was in about negative 15 apparently. Could have got to last night. But this is the phenomenon that we'd heard about. Every night, the flamingos stay in the water and they actually get frozen and stuck in the water. So that's them, I'll zoom in for you. So their feet are stuck in the water at the moment. And apparently they wait each day for the sun to come up and thought, look, that one's trying to fly and he can't. I'd love to hear in the comments if anyone knows, they must just have something where they deal with the cold a lot better than we do. Because obviously it's literally freezing out there. What do you think, Ock? Ocky slept with us all last night, didn't you, buddy? Hey, you stayed nice and warm. <laughs> and you know it's a pretty special phenomenon when Lee gets out of bed at 7 a.m. when it's this cold. True. Tisha. <laughs> and here comes the sun. Good morning, neighbors. How do we sleep? How cool is it?
So I just made a last minute decision to change tracks and kind of send everything everywhere. But one of the really cool things about this drive is that there's no street signs, it's purely tracks going everywhere as you can see. And they're kind of all heading in the same general direction, but it, as Jordan put it, it's a bit of choose your own adventure and you're really just picking the path of least resistance. But yeah, this is as wild as it gets out here. It's really cool. Very glad we're doing it in a convoy though because you wouldn't want to get stuck out here on your own. So we met some Austrian overlanders in Cisco and they did the Laguna Trout and a rented truck. And they're like, don't do it, the scenery's not even worth it. Sí. sí, también, sí. pero... pero uh, estamos a um, quedar por uh, almuerzo y continuo. Después Laguna Colorado. ¿Cuántos kilómetros de Laguna Colorado? Ah, uh, un momento. Es... Es 39 kilómetros. Sí. sí, es cerca. De nada. Es fruta. Yeah, so they did need more directions. I wonder if they don't have a GPS out here or not, but yeah, they just, they're going to Laguna, Colorado for the first time, so they needed a reminder of which way to go. That is awesome. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Just helping the locals out. Yeah. All right, on to the lunch spot. Where's Wally fans? We've found a chinchilla. There's more over there too. Another one up there. And so the chinchillas, you can see, have a little tail on them too. And they kind of hop around like kangaroos. What do you reckon, buddy? What's that, Hawk? What is it? Here's the lunch spot. And look at this, completely frozen this morning. Just needs a few hours to thaw out. Those 12 volt pumps are amazing. That. We've got another passenger for this leg. I swear she always knows when you're about to have some snacks. Yeah, every time. <laughs> New buds. It's a dog pack. And we're approaching Laguna, Colorado. Look how red, pink, pink red that is. And we're getting flagged down to stop because we're gonna have to pay an entrance to enter the park. Good morning, it's bloody freezing. It's 9 a.m. We stayed in the car park at Laguna, Colorado last night. And this morning we have discovered where the smart flamingos hang out because on the edges of Laguna, Colorado, there is thermal springs that come out. So these ones don't need to freeze. And they're just hanging in the hot pool, eating all the algae. The algae is the reason for the red color of Laguna, Colorado. And the algae is also the reason the flamingos turn pink from eating it all, which is pretty cool. They're amazing to see. And yeah, we are gonna start moving towards some hot springs because we're getting a little bit over the cold weather. Everything's frozen in the van again. But, you know, it's worth it for these views.
It is now day three. We are en route to our next destination along the Lagunas route. So far, we have both said that we think we've really lucked out on the weather. There hasn't been any snow on the ground. The roads haven't been wet. Yes, they're bumpy as you can hear and see. However, yes, it's freezing at night, but at least it doesn't affect road conditions once we can get the van started. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a little bit good going. It's been blue sky every day. So yeah, we think we're lucking out in that sense. Okay, who's that? Who's that? Mars. Yeah, this is cool. Aki's confused though. He's like, when can I go swimming? Yeah, probably not the Not in that spring. thing, buddy. And it smells disgusting. I actually think that it's not as bad as it could smell. Rotorua in New Zealand smells way, 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 way worse. Yeah, Rotorua in New Zealand's really bad. It's also a lot bigger too though. So. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. And like we were saying, it's so crazy. They let you, you drive pretty much right up to the thermal. Yeah. Soon all the tours will leave and we'll have this place for ourselves. Yep, time for lunch. Best part of overlanding here. Quite the lunch spot. Hells yeah. Lunch with the view. So long as it doesn't turn towards us because we did that earlier and it's in water as well. Yeah. And Aki doesn't seem to mind. He'll love you for life now. All right, team, we ready for hot springs? Let's do it. Let's You've already got the beer out, ready to go. So we're now on some pretty decent road and just before we actually ran into some cyclist overlanders, they've come from Chile and they were saying that from here south, the roads are even better. So I don't know whether we've just gotten super lucky, but you know, touch wood, it looks like you know all the statements about needing a four wheel drive and everything. We've had such a good run, whether the roads have just been graded, but our two wheel drive sprinters have done it easy. But we are not done yet. Buddy. So we have made the free hot springs and they look insane. Wow. I think this might be our camp spot for tonight. This is yeah, exceeding to go, expectations. I need to go to the place to go to the washroom. What's wrong? You got a pee funnel in the van. Ha 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 ha. Woo. Here you go, doggos. Even though this isn't the end of the road, it feels like we've driven like 50,000 miles to get to this hot spring. <laughs> so bloody nice. Aki's washing your van too. Hockey's <laughs> up washing the vans. <laughs> and Chloe's just joining in, rubbing against it. She's going, she's washing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, they're rolling. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's hard because you have a dog like Clover as well, with so much personality. Like, imagine if you just got a really good dog. I'll do it in a few rounds. Look at that. Beautiful veggie burgers. Master with Chef over here. Blue vine. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers to the team. Cheers to the good company. Love it, it's been awesome.
You ready to put your bathing suit on? <laughs> Just a it looks like a shopping bag. Just a little frozen. So are you going nude again? Maybe. <laughs> Mine is also frozen. great teamwork we've got and we had a plethora of dishes would you say <laughs> we did have a plethora of dishes but we've got a luxury of warm water to wash them with yeah it's very rare it's funny like the road hasn't been as difficult as it has been getting our van started and dethawing dethawing all of our water wait dethawing no thawing oh thawing yeah thawing out everything yeah that's been more of the challenge here as well as getting out of the hot water that was a challenge as well but this campsite was absolutely amazing. Are you helping with the dishes, buddy? Where's our girl Clove? Oh, look, she's, she's debating going for a swim. Okay, it is 11.20 and we are finally on our way. Lee has graciously made me a coffee. Thank you. And we are about 80 kilometers from the border, so we've still got a few hours more driving, but we've been told the roads are pretty good from here. And the Chilean border is actually the highest border crossing I think we'll have ever attempted, in that it's how high, Lee? 5,033 meters. That's a lot of meters. So hopefully our vans go okay. Jordan and Kathy have both never even been to that elevation with or without their van. So yeah, we'll see how we go and take you with us. That last beauty was Laguna Verde, as you can probably tell, and it is bloody freezing outside because I think we're almost at that 5,000 meter elevation. And really windy, so we couldn't really film up there. Yeah, super windy, and as you could probably see, that the coldness didn't blow that off you one little bit. Hey, bud. Well, we are nearing the end of the road. We just stopped there to hand over our tip, which is our temporary import permit for the vehicle. And then he told us it's another five kilometers north where we get stamped out of Bolivia. Next step, just to get stamped into Chile. Into our 16th country. 16th country, that one will be a little bit slower just because we have paperwork for Aki that we have to hand in as well as apparently they do a full vehicle inspection. So we'll find that out soon. Just hey, like Aki, welcome to your 17th country. <laughs> welcome. And just like that, we are in Chile. With pavement. We're and fly. All right, we are en route to the last stop, which is the actual Chile immigration side. And then we are heading over here to Atacama. San Pedro. San Pedro de Atacama. For the first time in four or five days, Max has taken off his Ugg boots because yeah. it is 20 degrees 22 right degrees 22 degrees celsius we're it, back in the heat yeah it feels amazing oh i'm like i love the mountains and they were great but i'm born for you're, the sun yeah you're beautiful. And I, i'm so glad to be back in the heat and that was just such an awesome journey and yeah you know i think we killed it to be honest don't believe everything you read because it's like the whole of this trip. If you do too much research, you're going to get scared off things. And so many yeah. people said four-wheel drives only, and that's 
Full and it's crap. like, don't take your own vehicle there, and you know, you won't be able to pass it in two wheel drive, et cetera, et cetera. But we proved them wrong. We did it. We're going to update some I Overlander posts and let people know how the conditions were when we went past. But we hope you guys had an awesome time coming with us. It yeah. was cold. You couldn't feel it, but you could see the beautiful sights. Yeah. Let us know what your favorite site was, whether it was the flamingos or some of the lagunas or the hot springs. Me in board shorts at the hot springs, probably. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, we can't wait to show you what Chile was like and bring you along with us. So we will see you next week. One last thing, this past December I told you I had an opportunity to go to Costa Rica and work with a professional photographer to film a video shoot for an Eco Lodge. It's finally ready to be released and I'm excited to share with you. It was my first ever modeling gig so you can hit the link at the end of this video. Take a watch, let me know what you thought. Bryce films awesome content so you can check out his channel as well. Thanks for watching guys.